Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today, we're gonna go over the overall market, give you guys some updates on overall markets and looking at some of the other sectors that we follow. <clears throat> so we're gonna do more technical analysis here. Uh, I'm seeing a bounce in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. I'm seeing it in lithium, in rare earth metals. I'm starting to see these things start to bounce. Obviously, I can see them in my account as well starting to firm up. So we're going to go over some of those. We'll we'll take a look at the patterns and see what's going on uh, in some other sectors here. So let's dive in. We've got the S&P 500 here. We've broken this to the downside, the rising wedge. We've got our high here. We have a lower high here. We have a lower low here. And we're going to see if this comes back up and tags this guy and either breaks through it or bounces and turns back down. So uh, it does look like we're getting a little bit of strength here to move on up, and we'll see what happens. The NASDAQ's getting a little bit of strength here too. We do have a bullish piercing here, where we, we, we kind of came up, came back to the bottom here, did a bounce. Now we're coming back, and this is a higher low. Now we have to see if this breaks to make a higher high. So we're watching to see how these things are interacting. Right now, it's still in a downtrend, but we got to see what, what, what's going on here. And it's going to take some time for it to develop. Uh, CMG does look like it's strengthening. It does look like this is putting in a bottom where we could potentially head higher for CMG. We've got Apple basically just moving sideways here. Uh, Amazon's getting a little bit of strength here. Again, that's broken to the downside, and we're starting to strengthen a little bit today. Facebook, another one that's getting a little bit of strength today. Obviously, this thing's got a lot of work to put in. Google, uh, it, this general vicinity has been a pretty good support area. It's using it as support and bouncing it off, off of it. We've got Baidu getting a little bit of buying pressure today. I should say... The pressure's there. It was down, still a down day, though. Visa moving sideways. We've got MasterCard getting all over the place, getting jiggy with it. Uh, the Trade Desk moving up quite a bit today. Again, we're still in this downtrend. Downtrend area. We'll see if it breaks. Roku also uh, getting a little bit of buying pressure. This guy looks a little bit interesting in this megaphone pattern and if you're looking at the hakanashi uh it is still coming down and maybe it'll tap this bottom here maybe going back to the regular candlesticks looking at some of the other stuff like uh lithium <clears throat> this is lithium the actual futures price uh this thing's been quite resilient <laughs> resilient just moving higher uh, the rare earth metals looks like it's getting a bid today. This guy is correlated to the overall market sometimes. Uh, and sometimes it's on steroids, but sometimes it trades like it. Sometimes it doesn't, but this looks good on a long-term perspective. Uh, lithium also is firming up, putting in a bullish engulfing here. Lithium could be one that you might want to look into for potential purchases. That is an area that I would be looking at uh four buys at this moment if you're interested in the in that area uh looking at wow alphaman really took off today 20 percent go alphaman because uh, i own some of that that's a tin tin company i didn't even i wasn't even didn't even see it it's in one of my accounts that i don't normally look at either uh my my position is going on down <clears throat> Just kind of, I'm just looking around. We've got uh, home builders. Home builders looks like they're strengthening with the market as well. So I do have uh, an entire thing on home builders for uh, the website. And looks like they're all strengthening up. I'm just kind of clicking through it, seeing how they're doing. Uh, lumber looks like it's strengthening up as well. I've got my awesome little uh, chart here that I drew. But uh, this is this is lumber here, uh, moving sideways there. We've got uh, not much to go over there. 
looking at the agricultural space, this thing is rocketing higher, still doing very well for Vanek Agribusiness ETF Moo. Got to get your Moo on. We've got uh, aluminum. Yeah, aluminum's getting a little bit of selling pressure still. Uh, this is your pullback here in aluminum, these consolidation periods. Uh, and I do think that we're going way higher on aluminum and all these other ones. Now, uh, more information. Uh, the U.S. housing starts did go up today. It's at 1.793 million. Uh, so if we if we go to Fred housing starts and look at the Fred housing starts, I just went to Google 1.793. It did increase. Let's look at the one year. It, it was a small increase over last month. Last month was 1.788 million. And this month is 1.793 million. Uh, so we are above the average and we are still building more new homes uh, for, how, for total housing unit starts. Uh, and then looking at the housing permits, <clears throat> the permits were also very robust at 1.873 million permits, uh, which was basically, the, it's been the same. Uh, 2021 was 1.885, January 1.895, February 1.865, and then 1.873 was the last one. So it's been very robust and been very stable for permits, <clears throat> which usually these most of these get converted to housing uh, starts. So we've been very stable in terms of permitting and the housing starts. That is important because it's, it's a huge part of our thesis uh, of the channel. Uh, that is the driver of inflation. Uh, one of the drivers, not the only driver. There's a bunch of money that they created and threw into the system that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so if we go to, I'm going to go to uh, long-term trends. We're going to look at and I'm just kind of going over a bunch of information here so you guys can uh, know what I look at to stay on top. The M2 money supply growth versus inflation from longtermtrends.net. And what we're going to look at is your, is your black M2 money supply. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is the M2 money supply that they went absolutely ballistic on. It, <clears throat> it went way up from like 6.8% all the way up to 23%, uh, and then eventually eclipsed 27%. Then we got a decline in the printing. We started to print at still 13%, and then we're declining a little bit more uh, to 11%. And we're seeing the red line, the inflation rate, start to move up. The inflation rate is lagged behind the black line. The black line moves. So this 10.4% in the top of 2009 will manifest itself in inflation of November 30th, 2009. So this um, Great Recession, come on, that right there is December 31st. So January of 09, and then the, the money came into the system November 2009-ish or so. That's that's It's delayed by, I should say, July 31st is this one here, June. It's about a year delay, a year to two year delay. So when they started printing all this money uh, and a, on a year or two year delay, we, we did April 30th, 2020. That's about now is when it's going to be hitting all this inflation and it ramped higher all the way till uh about January 31st 2021. So we would see that that this max inflation about a year to two years behind it. <clears throat> and then you're going to see the inflation rate uh potentially decline a little bit uh depending on a multiple of things. So we could see a disinflation after this high inflationary period at some point. We could have a consolidation period in commodities. And then we'll repeat because the underlying structural market conditions for commodities is ultra bullish from the supply demand perspective 
in the years 2023, 2024, 2025. We start to see massive deficits. Uh, so I don't, you've got two things that are transferring money into the CPI. So I should say transferring inflation into the C CPI numbers. You've got money coming into the system. That's what that is, the M2 money supply. This M2 money supply is money coming into the system. This is both money that they artificially created in 2020 and on top of it, money that is being created from loaning in the system against new homes. That's the housing starts. It's the combination of those two things in the M2 money supply. The inflation rate is lagged behind it, and then it will eventually start to move up. This move here is this move here. And then this, this recent move is this gigantic move that came up. So <clears throat> we've got that in the system, that inflation uh, from those two aspects. The other aspects that are coming behind it that can transfer inflation into products is commodity shortages and supply chain shortages. Um, so you have the liquidity in the system, and then it has to be transferred into the consumer price index for the majority of people to figure out uh, that we have inflation. <laughs> uh, so what I think we have coming up next is uh, shortages of minerals, or I should say deficits, deficits of minerals and higher prices, which will work its way through uh, the whole commodity complex and energy prices. So we have high energy prices. I think high commodity prices are going to come very soon. <clears throat> we'll see deficits in zinc, copper, graphite, aluminum, cobalt, lithium. Uh, hopefully I didn't. Probably silver. Probably platinum. Definitely palladium. Uh, these prices are all going to go up. And the input costs for all of these large complex assemblies will go up. So it will be inflation. So the liquidity aspect is covered there. The supply demand aspect and supply chain stuff will have problems in a, a couple of years, I think, you know, maybe a year or two out. Uh, those combined liquidity and that we could see pretty bad inflation. Doesn't mean we go straight up from here. What it means is that money's going to come into the system continually from the liquidity coming from the housing market they may pull back some on the uh the stimulus type movement stuff and then we'll get the shortages with the deficits in the minerals coming 2023 24 and 25 depending on what they are and how big they are so that that's the other aspect uh so that's what i expect coming forward <clears throat> we could see pullbacks in some of our commodities uh consolidation periods perfectly normal. That's just the way it is. And that's how markets work. Consolidation pullbacks, in my opinion, are buying opportunities because the drivers of inflation, the drivers of the, of the supply shortages are all still in place. It's that simple. And when they're in place, we should be long commodities. And we're going to see bounces in the market. They're going to bounce back up. They're going to retest highs. They're going to re, you know, redo things or or create higher lows before breaking back down. That's the way markets work. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it on the website and on the channel. Uh, so we'll continue to do that. And you guys can definitely capture all this by giving me a thumb up and subscribing to the channel to watch all of it uh, and, and stay up on uh, all the recent news and, and data. All right, guys. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. This is Finding Value.